We're down at the start now of the Diamond Skull between Mahe Drysdale and Tim Onaska from Germany. And what a huge race we have now. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a huge race, if I'm honest. Well, the interesting thing is that Tim Onaska... It's Anaska, over now already. Tim Onaska is a dual junior world champion. Yeah, great. He's an under-23 yeah. world champion. Keep going, keep going. Build was, him up. It was in the A final. Come on, build him up. He was in the A final of the Olympic trials, but he, interestingly, <laughs> wasn't given a seat race for the yes. German Olympic team. Okay, then go to Mahe. He's won the Diamonds five times, world championship three times, and he's reigning Olympic champion. I think that's why the result looks like that. Well, I don't think there's any question. <laughs> if you're going to put money on this, you wouldn't have been putting it on anyone, but... Uh, the man in the bark station. You did a good Mark good attempt Dreister. to big him up, though, in fairness. But Well, <laughs> you know, I think he's a quality athlete. Tim Anaska, he's unbeaten at a underage level internationally, so he's one to watch for from Germany. He's up against arguably the best of all time, though. Yes. Mahe only got into town. He was, he was walking around the boat areas at 1 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So he, uh, he's not a training camp in Slovenia at the moment. So he's, uh, he's off the back of a good win from Poznan, the last World Cup. Looking to defend his Olympic title. He's got a bit of a, a stiff back. He, only, he doesn't row every day. He has a lot of time on the, on the bike as well. And Maho's family's here with him, Juliet and uh, his wife, Juliet, and their daughter traveling over here so they've got a, a place here in Henley and it's quite surprised to see him come here and none of the other Kiwi contingent coming along the sole international competitor from the Kiwi Olympic team competing at this event but he was in good spirits despite his late entry uh, into the UK the other night after some traveling woes but uh, eventually made it here to Henley as you say at 1am in the morning as opposed to 6 p.m. the night before when they planned on arriving here. But uh, certainly that's not having an impact on his ability to race this skull. Currently leading comfortably over Tim Anaska from Germany. And the one thing that you have to do, be it the Olympics, Henley or the World Championships, is cope with things that you can't control. You're going to have delays at airports, with buses, with all sorts of things at the Olympics. And so if you let them fluster you and affect your racing, then you're not going to perform as well. Whereas having had an experience of you know, wasting eight hours at an airport and getting here and being dehydrated and tired and happy to race the next day is, is all good experience even for a man with as much experience as Mahe. And we can see Tim Nasca. I mean, this is a huge race though. To, to be Tim winning the junior double, junior single, under 23 double, and racing the under 23 single at the World Championships later this year to be racing off in a match race against the Olympic champion, one of the greatest scholars of all time, Mahe Drysdale. I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge thing in his career, I would imagine. It is, although the, the difference is doing it in a head-to-head -head race, you're not going to get much out of it. If you've done it in a multi-lane race with a lot more going on, I think you'd have gained more of the experience, but, but now he's just spent seven minutes rowing in Mahe's wash, which is all you've learned is Mahe's a lot faster than you. Yes. But that's something that pretty much everyone in the world has had to learn as well. But in a multi-lane race, there's other people around as well. And that makes it a lot easier. You can just see him look over his shoulder there. It's a, a, lot, it's a lonely, hard place at the back of a, of a diamonds race because the crowd are close. You can feel the atmosphere, but at the same time, you, you, can, you can feel the guys washing ahead of you and you know you're in, a, in for a long bit of hurt. And you can see... Tim's boat especially starting to move around here. It's been quite bumpy up towards this end of the course. A bit of wash to contend with. Taking a few wild strokes there as he's mounting a little sprint to try and make the gap not quite so big. You can see Mahe, just the rhythm he has. It's long, very, very powerful. So that I think when you're rowing, you, you use a third of your energy when your oars aren't in the water. So it's important to make every stroke count. That's what Mahi does very well. He's a tall guy, but he rows incredibly long, and he's only stressing the muscles that need to be stressed, the ones that are not working. He keeps nice and relaxed, which is why he's, he's not only fast, but he's very fast in the second half of the race. And 
as we come down to the finish now in the Diamond Challenge Skulls, it is no surprise to see the Kiwi Olympic champion Mahe Drysdale take the win over Tim Nasca from Germany. And a little clap there from Mahe to congratulate Tim on a strong performance.